What's up, folks? Fans, friends, and followers. Andy here from the Music Emporium. Ian here. And uh, we do get this question a lot, both uh, through our social media channels and people writing in email, text, whatever, both from beginning mandolin players and even seasoned mandolin players. A style versus F style. Is there a difference? Should I spend more money to get an F style mandolin? Does it matter whatsoever aside from the looks of things? Well, we're here to help focus that decision making process today and maybe run down a couple of the pertinent differences between the two. Ian, you play a Collings MT2. We've got a Collings MT2 right here. And I should say right away, these are both Collings instruments, MT2 varnish, MF5 varnish. That's the A. That's the A. That's the F. That's the F. They both have Italian spruce tops. So while this is not supposed to be scientific, we're going to call this a pretty close comparison or as close as it can really get between two Collings instruments. Mm -hmm. We've set a decent control for the experiment. Decent control. So to go back, Ian, you play an MT2. Maybe just give us a couple of quick differences, generically speaking, between an A and an F. Sure. So uh, the obvious difference is you have a teardrop shape versus the scroll with the two points on the F. In this case, the bodies are otherwise comparable in terms of the internal air volume. Maybe you can make an argument that there's a little opening here that happens more with the top because you have a bigger piece of wood that's going over. So this, this Italian spruce is going over um, a solid block here and block here and here that uh, is attached to the sides, whereas the teardrop doesn't have those. So there's more mass in this instrument, mostly from the scroll, but Again, internal air volume is similar between the two. The question is whether that um, design translates to something that's audible. And maybe more stiffness too, right across the top. Possibly so, right? If that's what you're trying to achieve. Um, and that, what is that gonna give you with a, a top that has good stiffness? Adirondack uh, has a very strong stiffness to weight ratio. This Italian stuff does as well. These are both tone bar braced, we should mention. So you have these two bars that are supporting the uh, struts supporting the top underneath. So it's a very bluegrass mandolin design. And so that, that kind of feeds into the classic line you always hear about the F, which is it's a bluegrass mandolin. It's made to play bluegrass where that those higher frequencies are going to cut through. The stiffness would be an advantage um, to the people who say you have to have an F style mandolin to play bluegrass. I would say Tim O'Brien certainly gets it done on an A. We're also going to include here some clips of our friend Dan Bowie playing an A and an F from Luthier Joe Campanella. We'll close mic those, we'll make it a little bit more scientific. Uh, if you wanna put the headphones on and really dissect the frequencies, that'll be a cool experiment to dive into as well. But maybe let's hear just a tiny bit on both of these instruments sure. to see if it actually, uh, if any of this stuff actually makes any appreciable difference in terms of the sound in the room. And you guys are hearing just the camera audio, sound in the room, not close mic. Hopefully what we're hearing, a little bit of that will translate through headphones or speakers or whatever you look Yeah, like. put your headphones on. We've got our shotgun mic here in the room and just to hear some chords on it. Note for note. <laughs> same tempo, same weight of right hand. I'm trying not to drive it any harder, right? So. but you, you get the idea. Well, this, I mean, it's bluegrass, so a little slop is inherent in that. Um, to me, just in the room, I can kind of feel it sitting next to you as well as hear it. The F definitely feels like it's throwing more air, almost like a dreadnought style guitar versus a smaller guitar. It's, there's, it's pushing more sound out of the box. There's a difference between the, the felt experience of playing the instrument or being in its proximity mm -hmm. versus what might be um, projected out of the room or, or or audible, there's a, there's a felt component. First of all, they're very close, let's just say. They are, they are. Um, so the maker is the biggest determining factor in the sound of these instruments. Collings is going for the same, the, you know, their, their thicknessing of the tops are, are close, the arching, the recurve, the, that negative curve here around the periphery of the instrument, uh, 
they're, they have the same build philosophy applied to both of these instruments. So comparing these two, uh, going sort of a little bit more apples to apples versus another maker's A and F. So I would say when people are asking A versus F, I would start by saying find the voicing of the mandolin maker you like, mm. the, what, what works resonates with you. Good point. And then look between to see about this difference between A and F. But between these two, I hear this as a little bit brighter, which cuts differently, right? Um, whether that's because it's actually brighter or whether it's because this has a little bit more low mid activity yep. and so it almost comes off as a little bit more rounded or forgiving on the highs whereas this side is a little more laser cut and there's a there's an a, a relative absence of that low end and that's the thing when you're on an A and you're saying what am I missing that's often the sense that especially on that big chop chord that's what this scroll is is giving you right you are paying disproportionately for it for that labor because carving this is really really labor intensive there's just a lot of work to make that uh both the cut of the scroll but then also doing all of the uh inlaying that binding and purfling it's very very time consuming very true and to circle back to the point Ian just made it is all about the builder everybody's going to have their own philosophies they're going for a different thing you know, a, a, a luthier grade instrument, you know, might have a little bit taken off a, a brace here or there, it might radically affect the sound in different ways. Hopefully this was a little bit illuminating if you're shopping for mandolin or if you're just kind of looking for some content, having your questions answered. Uh, if you guys liked it, you know what to do. Smash the like button. Hit, hit all the, the buttons. Subscribe button. All the buttons that you see, hit them all. The one that says add to cart, hit that one too. Hit the little heart, hit the thumbs up, do all of it. It really does help us out and we really do appreciate it. So until next time, if you enjoy the content, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you later. Your place out. <laughs> All right. It was midnight on.